Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm going to show you how to take seeds from seed through to NFT channel with Jiffy Pete Pellets. I'm going to be outlining the basic method that you need to use, the things that you need to consider when starting seeds in this medium, and a general guide on the way that I propagate seeds within Jiffy Pellets. Let's get started. Okay, so to begin with, we're gonna lay out our pellets across a propagation tray. Now, I love these style of propagation trays with a sieve-like bottom and the propagation tray underneath. This just allows us to remove the peat pellets and drain them once they're rehydrated. And this will give us the perfect amount of moisture within the pellets themselves. I'm just gonna fill up this tray with pellets and we can rehydrate them. And these trays all come with propagation domes and we'll be using this a bit later. So I'm just going to fill the entire tray with pellets, laying them out in an orderly fashion, all with the little indent on the top facing up. And that is what we have once we've laid it out. And they will tend to float. so. We're just gonna fill it with water a little bit, let them soak it up, and then they'll sit heavy down on the bottom and we can fill it up with the water some more. Now I will point out at this point that these are the cocoa version of the Jiffy Peat pellets. So cocoa peat and not peat moss. Uh, you can get peat moss and cocoa peat, but you just treat them the same. Uh, the cocoa is surrounded by paper, which does actually disintegrate a bit more than obviously the plastic that the peat is surrounded by. Um, so that is something you have to take into consideration with vertical hydroponic systems and things where, where the pellet has to actually hold together a little bit more versus say your NFT where the water is very softly uh, moving past the pellets. So we're gonna fill it up a little bit, let them soak it up and then fill it up over the top of the pellets until they've reached full size, at which point we can drain out the excess water. And you just wanna go over the top of them because the top seems to be as far as I can tell, the most absorbent part of the pellets. So you just wanna make sure that that's soaking through and then capillary action will do the rest for us. And I'm just gonna fill it up to the point where they're just starting to float. Like that. And we'll let them soak it up and we'll continue filling it once they've soaked it up. So I'm just topping this up because we got our peat pellets to about that size and they've got a little ways to go and we're just going to let them soak up as much water as they want and while they're soaking up the water we can get our seeds and now that they've been sitting in the water for a little bit and they've not soaked up anymore i'm fully satisfied that they're completely rehydrated we can take out the sieve part of the tray and put that aside and get rid of the excess water put our pellets back in now they're ready for planting. Now these seeds are actually from Rob Bob. Rob Bob gave them to me when he visited the Hucho's greenhouse and set. And thank you Rob for sending me some cos seeds. I've actually used them before and they germinate with almost 100% success rate. So I'm excited to use them again. So these are from November 2021 and I'm just going to go along and drop one or two into the whole divot at the top of each of the pellets and that is all i'm going to do there is no need to cover these the seeds will especially with cos and most lettuce the seeds will germinate as is they'll just send roots down into the cocoa pellet without us having to cover them at all and it will actually make it easier for the plants to pop up if we just leave them to their own devices without covering them. If you are not using a propagation dome, it is possible that you will need to cover them because the humidity within the actual cocoa pellet will be what you are actually relying on at that point. But with the humidity dome, the temperature and humidity should stay up well and truly enough so that the seeds will germinate on the surface of the cocoa. Now, there is no hydroponic nutrient within this system at the moment. So the way that we're starting seeds today can be applied to any garden, dirt, 
aquaponics or otherwise. We're taking these plants to their first true leaf without any hydroponic nutrient whatsoever. If you want to delay planting the plants, we will start adding a small amount of hydroponic nutrient once the seeds have germinated to the point of the first true leaf. And then after that, you can step up the nutrient gradually if you wanna keep them in this container, or you can just transfer them directly into full strength hydroponic nutrient within whatever system you're using. So let's set up a time-lapse camera on these seeds and see how they germinate. Put on our dome. We're going to close the dome. So it's completely closed and that is going to stay like that until we see the seeds pop. And then we're going to open up our dome or crack the dome. Okay, so this is my propagation area. Here I've got the Spider Farmer SF600 and that's what I'll be propagating these seedlings under. No sponsored placement, just a light that I like. So we'll set up the time-lapse camera in the corner of our propagator. Chuck the lid on, we'll see how they grow. And will you have a look at that result? Oh, I'm stoked with how this turned out. As you can see in the time-lapse video, I added in a thermometer at the start. And I actually found that the temperature that I've got in my studio isn't quite what I had in my other propagation area. So what I did was I added in a heat mat. Now, you don't have to use a heat mat. You can find a warm place within your house that you can propagate these seedlings like this in. There are many options on top of your water heater, on top of your fridge, any heat source within your house. Just make sure it's not too hot, obviously, and that will give you a good germination environment. Now, this isn't a problem for me most of the year. It's just that we're right in the middle of winter and my studio is insulated. However, it's not an area that I use to live in, so I don't keep it within a certain temperature range. In the video, you can actually see the fluctuation of the temperature over the night day cycle within the grow environment. Now, if you're really smart, you can mitigate the day night cycle of cold and hot by reversing the day night cycle of your light within an enclosed area. And the heat from the light will give you a balance between the cold of the night if you have the light on during the night and the warm of the day if you have the light off during the day. So you can regulate your environment with your grow light within a small space. Now, as you can see within the time-lapse video, as the day-night cycle happens, the temperature fluctuates between about 15 and 25 degrees. And that's the temperature range you're gonna to wanna to stay within for seedlings such as this. Now, I have not used any hydroponic nutrient at all with this grow. Uh, there is a little bit of algae on the top of these pellets. And I would say that that's from residual hydroponic nutrient from previous grows. So if you have been using propagation containers like this with hydroponic nutrient, there's absolutely no need to add any, but these may have accidentally had a slight amount of nutrient within the water just to begin with, because I wasn't starting from a completely new base. As you can see, the first true leaves and even the second true leaves are coming out on most of these seedlings and I've had almost 100% success rate. So now we can take them from our propagation area and go straight to planting them into our NFT. Full strength nutrient, straight up, no babying, just like Troy Rosenberg said. We take them directly from zero nutrient to full strength, 1.5 EC greens hydroponic nutrient. 
But before we plant, I have to remove the current crop of lettuce, which has actually turned out really well. Um, it looks a bit messy at the moment because they're falling over and I've left them a bit long. But as you can see, they've headed up really nicely. I'm really happy with this lettuce. <laughs> so I'm gonna collect it up, give it away, and we can refill our system. These ones can go to the chickens and I'm gonna clean the rails. I don't get too pedantic about the inside of the rails. Healthy plants will fight off anything that's in there. <laughs> Look at all that lettuce and my um, lettuce carrying device. <laughs> we can now go ahead and plant our seedlings. And it's as easy as dropping them straight in the hole. No net cups, nothing needed, sitting straight on the bottom and that will take them to full maturity as adult cos lettuce. I probably didn't mention this earlier, so I'll mention it now. I didn't water these throughout the entirety of the propagation. And you can see on top, you've got the seedling and at the bottom, we've got a single root protruding and that's exactly at the stage you want these seedlings. And now we can plan out the rest. And there we have it. All of our seedlings are in our NFT channels and we don't have to do anything to get them to full maturity. They'll take care of themselves. Now my nutrient is between 1.3 and 1.5 EC and it's between 5.5 and 6.5 pH. So I'd set up a time-lapse camera at the beginning of the last grow and we can watch to full maturity cause seedlings in the exact same method as this. Thank you for watching this episode of Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time.